Good morning everybody. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we are going to start some beef bone broth. We processed the steer last week and I am trying my best to use every possible part of him. Anyway, I have some of the uh, bones and I've had them outside in the cooler with ice on there. And I'm trying my best to get it all worked up because to be honest with you, after over a week of looking at beef, I'm getting a little tired. I want to put my bones in my uh, turkey roaster. Folks, there's several different ways to make broth. Okay, you can make it in the Instant Pot. You can make it in these turkey roasters. You can make it a crock pot. You can even make it in a pot on top of your stove top. Whatever way is going to work best for you. But there's a lot of basic things that are the same no matter how you do it. You start out by roasting the bones. This is heavy, guys. Okay. I've got this turned to 425. I'm going to put a lid on there. And then after 45 minutes, I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay. The timer has just gone off for our uh, bones that are roasting. Folks, that smells like a steak on the grill. I'm telling you. I love the smell of that. Okay, we're gonna turn it down from the 225 down to about 200, 210 degrees. Okay, well, folks, you can use celery stalks here. You can use whole carrots, baby carrots. You can use onions. Or if you save your scraps whenever you're peeling stuff and put them in a baggie in the freezer, this is a perfect use for that. Just throw it in your stock or in your broth. But I don't have any of that right now. So I have about three or four stalks of celery and I don't know, 15 or 20 baby carrots. So I'm just going to throw those in here. Now folks, normally at this point, I would put in about five onions. But in the last few days, I have made multiple, multiple batches of this bone broth. And to be honest with you, I went to get onions a few minutes ago, and I'd used them all. So... I'm going to put some minced onion in there, guys. Use what you got. I'm going to put, I don't know, probably about an eighth of a cup or so in there. We like a really strong onion flavor, so that won't bother us any at all. And put some salt. Three or four tablespoons of salt. If you like something saltier, you can always add more. We don't use a lot of salt. And then peppercorns. Folks, that's the last of the uh, peppercorns I have in my pepper mill. Normally, I would use about double that amount, but guys, guess what? When this is done, I can always add pepper to my broth. It's not the end of the world. Okay, I have some Worcestershire sauce. I think it gives it a little extra richness in the broth. If you don't think you would like this, then don't put it in there. I'm going to put two or three tablespoons of it in there. But folks, a lot of people use bay leaves in their uh, stock. I don't have any, so therefore I'm not going to put it in there. But one thing that you always want to be sure you put in there is some apple cider vinegar. Okay, Folks, this helps draw all that collagen out of the bones. Put about three or four tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. Okay. And then we're going to fill up the uh, roaster with just tap water. Depends on how many bones you've got in there as to how much water, of course, it's going to take to fill it up. These are two half-gallon uh, jars, and this is a gallon. I don't think I'm going to use nowhere near this. 
I'm going to fill it up until we get to the uh, top of the container because some of it will simmer away, folks, but most of it will be in there. So all in all, that's about a gallon and a half of water. Okay, I'm going to put my lid back on there. And this is going to simmer uh, 24 to 30 hours. Um, if it doesn't look rich enough or dark enough for you, then let it go a little bit longer. It's not going to hurt it to go up to 48 hours. Okay, folks, the uh, bone broth has been simmering in my turkey roaster uh, for somewhere between 36 and 40 hours. Normally, I don't let it go that long, but hey guys, life happens. Sometimes things come up, like a bee sting that you have an allergic reaction to out of the blue, and you just have to take a minute and stop. But anyway, this has been going, and we take the lid off of it. I want you to look at that beautiful dark color in there okay now folks whenever i make the broth in my instant pot i usually use this strainer right here for the bones because there's not that many of them in there i tried doing this on a previous batch and guys it took me like four times draining the uh, bones to get off the broth out of it using this I don't have a huge strainer. I have a lot of big pots. But, guys, I decided to use this. And we'll see how this works. For those who don't know, that's what you sit down in a pot and you cook spaghetti in or other pasta and you pick it up and it's drained. So, I like to try to use what I've got and improvise. Anyway, I'm going to use my big scoop and start taking some of the uh, stuff out of there. Okay, I'm going to set this as close to it as what I can get because guys, if you've watched very many of my videos, you know I'm a messy person. I make a mess in my kitchen. Do you make messes in your kitchen? Let me know in the comments because I don't know how to do anything and not get it everywhere. Okay, so I'm just going to Start scooping this out, and what I can get bone-wise with this, I will. And folks, the uh, bones, they always have a little bit of leftover meat on there. So I never just dump this and throw it away. Um, what I do is the uh, meat that's left on those bones, I will uh, pick it off and add it into my dog's food. I try not to waste anything around here, but I'm just gonna keep going with this. And some of these bones are pretty big. That won't pick them up. It's plastic, it's flimsy. So, like this. There's no way that that would be picking. Told you I'm a messy person, guys. That one really wasn't my fault the uh, bone fell apart where it's been cooking for so long. So, always be careful when you're doing this, guys, because, as you can see, it is very easy for something to happen and make a mess. But let me just get all these out and let them drain. Okay, the bones has drained. And now, let's go in here and we're going to scoop the broth that's in the uh, roaster out. Again, I'm going to put it through my pasta strainer. Hey guys, use what you got, it works. Well, we we'll use this method until the uh, pot is low enough that I can actually pick it up and dump it. Because right now, folks, let me show you the level. Okay, it's heavy. And I don't want to pick it up and risk dropping it, number one, and losing all that broth. But number two, I don't want to get burned. So I'm just going to continue to pick this up until I get to a level 
in the uh, pot that I'm actually comfortable with picking the uh, roaster pan up and dumping. Now, after I get all of this strained out, I'm gonna let it sit at room temperature until it gets cool enough to put in the refrigerator. That will take several hours, to be honest with you. Okay. Guys, wish me luck with this. There is the uh, broth. That right there is what has come out of the broth. I did a pretty good job skimming everything out. Let me set this over here. Okay, folks, this is the level that we have right now. Okay, like I say, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this over on my kitchen table and let it cool and then I'm going to put it in the refrigerator and I'll show you what it looks like uh, as soon as it gets that fat congealed on top it's going to be hard and we're going to scoop the fat off so we'd leave it sitting out on the table like that one right there is until it cooled down then we would put it in the refrigerator until all the fat rose to the top. Oh, another batch done. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this, so I'm just gonna, oh, this one's got big fat content on it. Just bear with me. Okay. I'm going to break this off and I'm going to rake all of the uh, broth down in there. There we go. Now we got it broke. Okay, we're just gonna, like I say, just rake all this off. Try to keep from adding a lot of fat. But look how thick that is, folks. That's why it was so hard to break. This is what I've been dealing with. So that's a huge difference when it, you try to break it. Okay, so. Anyway, I promise I'll get to what you want to see here in just a second. But this is home cooking, folks. It's real life. And it's just how it is. Okay. So I can get the rest of that off here in a minute. And let me show you how I'm processing this. Okay. I wrote the date on the bag. And I wrote what it is. It's bone broth. Okay, there's probably an easier way to do this, guys. If you know an easier way, let me know. First time I've done the uh, beef bone broth, so it's a learning process. Okay, I'm going to put two cups in that. So I'm going to measure it out in here. Don't have to be 100% exact, guys. It's home cooking, and I'll probably use a lot of this like in beef stews and stuff. But it's right at two cups. Okay. I've got my wide mouth funnel. And I'm putting it inside my bag. Okay. And I do have it sitting inside an old plastic container in case I spill it everywhere. It's easier to clean up that way. So. Just put it in here. Shake it down. All right. Close it over, mash, mash most of the air out of it, and then seal it. Okay. Now, folks, like I had mentioned, I have made several batches of this, and this one by far is the richest. But I'm going to freeze these. They're pretty well flat. Uh, until they're frozen solid, then I'm going to put about two or three of them inside a gallon Ziploc bag that's going to prevent any type of freezer burn. 
and whenever I need them, I can just take them out, put them uh, on a plate, put them in the refrigerator to defrost. Or if I'm going to be cooking in my crock pot, folks, you don't even have to do that. Just get scissors, cut the entire top of the bag off, dump it in your crock pot with your uh, soups or stews, put it on low, and you don't have to worry about it. But that is one of the ways that I am putting this bone broth up. So thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you on the next video.